ब्रह्म ज्ञान चिमिरंधस्य ज्ञानं जनशलाकाया चक्षुरं मीलितं येन तस्माय श्री गुरवे नमः गुरु मंजर ट्रेडिशनली लाइक डिसाइपल्स हियर फ्रॉम गुरु पर्सनली लाइक बट नाउ इन कलियुगा मींस नोडेस वी डोंट गेट गेट मच एसोसिएशन ऑफ आवर गुरु और साधुस लाइक very frequently as we are in the preaching movement and we have to go away and preach mm. so and uh, devotees here from uh, mp3 players like recorded lectures but i feel more enlivened when i hear personally and it is also authentic way like means traditionally it has been done like that is hearing from guru directly so what we should do and how we can improve in this well um it's not necessarily true in every case that the guru and disciple stay together all the time we find that many uh acharyas they would travel widely so they would they uh they may have a base but they would travel widely just like shankara who we don't accept his philosophy but he was in the you know he's accepted as shankara acharya he was the role in the role of a vedic acharya in ramanuja madva ramanuja madva they travel widely and initiated people wherever they went uh madhavendra puri when he came to shantipur advaita acharya took initiation from him and then advaita he he probably just saw him for a few days and then never saw him again so it may be that it's not that in every case you get um so much direct association uh chaitanya mahaprabhu also he traveled widely and gave people krishna consciousness and the maha mantra and told them to go out and be gurus and then he might never see them and probably never saw most of the people again so uh in the case of all these acharyas gradually by their widespread influence the some sangha of their disciples was established so that uh people would be initiated in a sampradaya and they may not see the guru much but um there would be others in the sampradaya who were teaching and imparting the teachings of the sampradaya okay. just like up to the present day in the shri vaishnav sampradaya there are not that many initiating gurus they stay in certain places mostly they stay in certain places uh they they don't travel much We're, well most of them they don't travel much it, so um the idea of staying with the guru most of the time actually that may not be the case in in most cases it may be that it's like some in, in some small area there's someone who initiates in a small area like that even the who needs this i don't need it this supposed to be for me yeah i i didn't get attacked by mosquitoes here yeah so um so apart from diksha guru there are shiksha gurus True. and there's also the uh, it depends a lot on the individual disciple how they they themselves make the connection yes. shila prabhat said i i only met my guru maybe a dozen times mm-hmm. which means he must have seen him and heard from him more times but actual personal interaction not that much but due to his receptiveness he what he got he was able to give to the whole world in such a phenomenal manner yes. shila prabhat it used to be a famous saying that personal association is for fools you ever heard that before yeah it's a famous saying <laughs> of course we all are fools but the idea is that one should be able to 
to pick up the Bani and not be so much concerned with the Vapu, with, with the instruction rather than the personal form. On the other hand, we shouldn't uh, think that the personal association is not important. Um, it does make a difference being personally present and the whole atmosphere that is created when there's Sadhu Sangha speaking like that. Uh, but again, a lot depends on our own receptivity. The Prabhupada sometimes gave the example that the mosquito is also is very so closely associated with the guru, but is not doing any service or taking any advantage, but is simply biting. Srila Prabhupada, uh, he wrote a letter to Hridayananda Maharaj said, addressing this very question. And he said that, yes, I, I, would also, I would like to be with my disciples and be with them all the time, but uh, for, for serving Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission, we have to go off to different parts of the world. Please. So Srila Prabhupada had the system that he wanted all the devotees to come to Mayapur every year for the Mayapur festival, and Good. they would associate with Srila Prabhupada Good, and then go and preach all over the world. Please. So I'm trying to do something like that also with the Shravan Kirtan camps that people can come, devotees can come, and at least my disciples, there can be some interaction of hearing and chanting. Um, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was traveling in South India, that's recorded in Chaitanya Charitamrita. And it's recorded how he met the Brahmana called Kurma in the area of Sri Kurma Kshetra. And the Brahmana said, after meeting you, I don't want to remain in this family life, I'll go with you. <laughs> I, I don't want to remain in these in the waves of material existence. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told him to not to come with him, to stay in that place. He said he said he wanted to go with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is his guru, he wanted to hear from him. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told him, "You become a guru." Jare dekho tare kaha Krishna upadesh amar agyai guru hoya taro edesh. Wherever you go, whoever you meet, instruct them in the science of Krishna. Uh, on my order, be a guru and deliver this country. Kabhu na badhi be tomai e bishoi taranga punarapi eight high pabe mora shonga. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, "If you do this." then the waves of material existence will not be any obstruction to you. And you, uh, you will get my association right here at this place. That means that if we uh, follow the orders of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we're always in, in his association. Hello. Whereas even if we're very personally associated with him, if we don't follow his orders, we don't get his association. Amen. In that tour of South India, just one person with, with, was with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. A devotee called Kala Krishna Das traveled with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He was the only person traveling with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Can you imagine what intimate association? You have him all to yourself. Of course, he's traveling here and there meeting different people, but the one person who's with him only. But uh, when uh, some tantric type of people, they were mad, they seduced him away, and they, they said, come on, we've got so many beautiful women, you come and join us. And he left Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and went and joined them. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu practically by force pulled Kala Krishnadas back. But uh, it's just an example of someone in very close association who didn't do so well. Now here's a couple of interesting and, uh, well, relevant anecdotes in this regard. Uh, Prabhu Vishnu Swami told me, that he's one of our senior god brothers, he told me that three times after he was initiated, he was in Prabhupada's presence, and Prabhupada, pointing to him, asked other devotees, who is that boy, what's his name? Three times asked. And um, there's a, the, a book by Partha Sarati Das Goswami, another of my god brothers, describing what association he had with Srila Prabhupada. So it describes that Prabhupada was staying with them in Durban, I believe it was, someplace in South Africa. Prabhupada stayed in that place for three weeks. 
And it was a small house, and there about that was a rented house or whatever. There were five or six devotees living in the temple. So Prabhupada was there for three weeks, and the only he only spoke two words during that whole time to Padasarati, Hare Krishna. That's all. One time he looked at him and said, Hare Krishna. He made no effort to get to know him, so to speak. Even though he was there for three weeks, there was hardly anyone there. Um... <laughs> Because as the movement expanded, Prabhupada, he, he dealt with his, mostly with his leading disciples, and he expected them to instruct those who, were, uh, who came later. Because physically it's impossible to personally instruct in literally thousands of people. So Srila Prabhupada, he wrote his books to give instruction, he gave lectures in which everyone was welcome to attend. And he uh, oversaw the movement through his leading disciples. Yeah. And even some devotees were doing very outstanding service, uh, but you know, they would remain at some respectful distance from Prabhupada. That's just like some devotees were doing so much book distribution, but, but like that, that meant some distance. So you, in your case, who have asked this question, you're in a, you're somewhat cut off from everyone, being in a small town, in a new center, pioneering work. But uh, that's one way to, you, you, can, you can actually get a lot more mercy doing that. Taking that risk and difficulty to do some, to uh, preach in a new place, mm. so you can. We we're, we're told that we should get association of devotees, but um, sometimes the impetus to really, or, or the opportunity to serve Krishna in a in a very intense way comes when we don't have much association. If there are many devotees, you can just kind of stay in some small corner and just do a little service here and there and not be noticed much and just chant Hare Krishna and be happy, which is nice. But if you're uh, out in the preaching field, then... You, you have to be active and you have to take decisions you, are, you have to take responsibility you have to really pray to Prabhupada and Krishna for the strength to uh, push on the movement so what's the conclusion of all this discussion? Mari. well in your case uh, go on preaching as you're doing and come from time to time to these uh, camps like this you can go on preaching more and more and you'll find that there'll be more and more devotees so you'll get association. You may think, well, everyone's junior to me so I need some senior association. Kao so you can come. Uh, but you may find even that the people who you preach to, they may become uh, very advanced also, some of them. All right, so... You may, if, you, if you were to come and just sit in one place and hear and chant, that would be very nice. But after some time, you would, you'd probably feel, I have to go out and do something for serving Prabhupada's movement. Jalim. Srila Prabhupada, he didn't encourage his disciples actually just to follow him around. There some devotees who wanted to do that, who just like to go from place to place and hear Prabhupada and be with him. Prabhupada didn't encourage that. He wanted to see how everyone's engaged in some practical service for the movement. But that can be taken too far also. It's like, you know, if, if you, a senior devotee comes and, uh, well, I'm busy doing something else and you don't bother attending or something, that's also not very good. We shouldn't think that association of senior devotees is unimportant. So, anyway, we have, like I said, we have these camps from time to time. Those who want, they can come and attend. Did you give that watch back to Arjuna? Okay. Could you understand what was said? So he's saying that means what about like if you have intimacy with Guru? Whatever. Yeah, that's also a, that's also a possibility that 
that uh, there's a saying in English which Prabhupada would quote, familiarity breeds contempt. I wonder where that came from, that saying. Hmm? No, Prabhupada quotes it, but it's, it's an English saying. It's not that Prabhupada made it up. Familiarity breeds contempt. And then... So... That's also there. After some time you may not appreciate the association. You may think that, well, you know, every day we can hear from the Guru, so what does it matter if I skip one day? That's called taking it for granted. I don't know how that's like an idiomatic usage. I don't know how you translate that. Hmm. Then... Ah. Speak it and we can repeat here. This mic, I can't understand what's spoken in it anyway. Service and separation. Vapu and Vani, service in separation. After the spiritual master has passed away. Sometimes there is hope for it. Misinterpretation. There is a scope for misinterpretation instructions. of instructions. Of course, there's also a scope even in his presence. But that happened in Srila Prabhupada's presence, and he would he would make the position very clear. Hmm. But after Prabhupada passes away, then people they may give, bring all the different interpretations how do we understand exactly what is the actual fact those who serve the spiritual master personally are they in the best position to understand ok Trans, you know, put that in to tell them Well, again, we have the example of Srila Prabhupada. He didn't have so much personal association as many of his god-brothers, but he, he uh, made the connection better than any of them. Someone may have lots of personal association, but they, they maintain personal desires, or, uh, whereas someone who doesn't have much personal association is very sincere and they, they, they get the essence. I was just because that motorbike had come and then the fumes from that. Sahadev Prabhu said Hyderabad is like a, seems like a village after coming from Hong Kong, but after coming from the village, <laughs> the actual field, not even a village, even the side street seems like an unpleasant place. So it's not necessarily true, it may be true, but it's not necessarily true that those who had personal association, they're in a better position to understand the intent of the Guru. Srila Prabhupada said, if you want to know me, read my books. Yes. So you can do that. Srila Prabhupada said, I will never die, I will live forever in my books. So any of you might be in a position, you, you can understand Prabhupada as well as his direct disciples. It may be that after a few hundred years someone comes and they, they have, uh, you know, they have insight into Prabhupada's teachings more than any of us. That's generally accepted in the Madhva Sampradaya, that Madhva's teachings were explained uh, by Jayatirtha, who came somewhat 300 years later. Of course, uh, Madhva's writings were uh, very terse. Terse means sankshipt. You would just write very briefly. So uh, to understand the essence, uh, Jayatirtha, he, it's generally accepted that he explained that. He unpacked it, as the saying goes. Whereas Srila Prabhupada's style was quite different. I mean, he, he put everything in very simple, plain language and explained in detail. And still people have so many different understandings and interpretations. Exactly how to understand, it can be a very complex subject. Uh, I am in, I'm a member of a committee which is uh, all, uh, 
brought into existence by the GBC, the ultimate managing authority of ISKCON. It's called the uh, Hermeneutics and Epistemology Committee. Actually, it should be called the Epistemology and Hermeneutics because Epistemology comes first. Anyway, it's very big, long words. <laughs> epistemology means... Uh, how would we say that? Uh, Pramana Vichara, you could say. What are the sources of not? How can we understand anything? And hermeneutics is, you could say, uh, the subject is Shastra Vichara. How do we understand Shastra? Suggests that when we come to Pramana Vichara, we accept Shastra as Pramana. But there are many philosophers who don't accept Shastra as Pramana. So the first thing is epistemology, and then after that, when you accept Shastra, then you come to hermeneutics, which means how to understand Shastra. It's actually a complex subject. If you if you get into all the details, it can be quite complex. Because, uh, well, we, we, we accept Shastra because it's a Purusheya, it is perfect knowledge, it's not coming from any uh, mundane person who has the four defects. But then uh, we can only understand Shastra through, through an Acharya. <coughs> Even Srimad Bhagavatam is, is the topmost exposition of reality. But we, if you just read the Sanskrit verse, I mean, first of all, you have to learn Sanskrit. But then even if you learned Sanskrit and read the Bhagavatam without any guidance, you wouldn't understand anything. <laughs> Just like the first words of Bhagavatam. Janmadhyasya seyataha. After the invocation comes Janmadhyasya seyataha. It literally means birth, etc., from which. So unless you have a background in uh, Vedic philosophy, you won't you have a clue what does that mean. What does it mean? <laughs> Those who have a background, they can understand that this is a uh, synopsis of Yatova Yamani Bhutani Jayante Yena Jatani Jivante Yat Prayat Yabi Yabi Yat Prayat Yabi Yabi Sangvishanti Tad Vijigyasasvad Tad Brahmati. This is from Taitiriya Upanishad that that from which everything emanates, that by which everything is maintained, yat prayat yapi sangvishanti, that into which everything ultimately enters again, that is the proper subject for inquiry, that is Brahma, that is the spiritual subject. So, it's... To have that background, you have to have some association with devotees. So... Although everything is Shastra-based, we rely on the association and mercy of devotees. What is that? Uh, Bhaktis tu Bhagavad Bhakta Sangena Parijayate. That uh, Bhakti comes about by association with devotees. Yes. Therefore, Brahmanda, Brahmite, Kono, Bhagyavan, Jeev, Guru, Krishna, Prasade, Pailat, Bhakti, Lata, Bij. That those who are fortunate, they get the, by the mercy of Krishna, they get the association of devotees, and the seed of Bhakti is planted in their heart. So we don't just accept anyone as, a, as an Acharya. He must have all the symptoms according to Shastra. Uh, and the, the Acharya teaches only according to Shastra. But we're completely rely on the Acharyas to explain the Shastra to us. So it's like a, which comes first, the chicken or the egg kind of question. And then there, there may be these questions are coming up in our discussion that that do we accept everything the Acharya says as true when he himself says that we only accept that which is stated in Shastra true. so say, sometimes he may some say something in joking just like for instance in the fourth canto of Bhagavatam which is pro, you, know, it's, it's, you know sacred Prabhupada's exposition of the absolute truth in Shastra so in one of the purports, Prabhupada writes that Sati was lucky that Lord Shiva didn't steal all her jewelry and sell it to buy intoxication. So it's like a joke against the kind of husband who would do that. They, they actually take their wife's property, Stridham, it's their own property. Some people say women don't have their own property, but in Vedic culture they do. They have their own private property. 
and uh, they take it and sell it and they use it for intoxication. Mm -hmm. So some people have read that statement and have become offended that why is Prabhupada speaking like that about Lord Shiva? But it's 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 in joking. So it requires uh, to exp it requires people to explain what Prabhupada is saying, even though it's very straightforward. But some you know, at some points may need some uh, explaining also. And it may be that who is explaining due to for some reason, due to their own personal uh, biases or conditioning, they may not want to repeat some of the things that Prabhupada says. Just like, for instance, um, Srila Prabhupada many times stated, and it's the Shastric version, that uh, women, the, the jivas who are in the bodies of women have a socially subordinate role overall to the jivas in the body of men, or just women or men, as we usually say. Women should never be given independence. They shouldn't be leaders of nations. They're less intelligent. That's, who wants to say that nowadays? But Prabhupada said it all the time. To say that is considered a crime against women. But uh, in, Prabhupada said it, so we should also say it and try to understand how it's true instead of pretending that Prabhupada didn't say it. Whoever takes to Krishna consciousness is most intelligent. Then. Some uneducated housewife who's chanting Hare Krishna is much more intelligent than Professor Einstein. Actually, he's not a professor, was he? He was never a professor. But, uh, or Albert Einstein. But uh, materially, it may not be as intelligent. No, no. So anyway, I'm, I'm just making the point using a, a, you know, like a highly controversial example. I don't know why it's controversial, but somehow or other it has become. That, uh, you know, we may not want to repeat what Prabhupada said. And this way the teachings get somewhat changed or re re-emphasized. So how to understand? Uh, Priya Govinda Prabhu was quoting this morning in his class. Sya Deve Para Bhakti Yatha Deve Tata Guru Tasyaite Katitahyarta Prakashante Mahamana. Instead of going round and round, up and down, in and out, in circles, back and front, trying to understand everything in little detail. If you're fortunate enough to uh, have a guru who can guide properly uh, and you have full faith in guru and Krishna, then all the import of Shastra is revealed to you. Okay.